Zenitsu Agatsuma is a character within Demon Slayer Kimetsu no Yaiba who is some of the most satisfying development in the series. He begins as a coward and through his adventures ends up becoming a real hero. With this video, we'll be discussing Zenitsu's history, character, and abilities. Like many other characters, Zenitsu's name has meaning pertaining to him. Zenitsu has kanji for good, as well as special and or unique. However, its meaning is goodness. His last name, Agatsuma, means my wife. Now, I'd say unique is a rather good way to describe him, as he does go on to accomplish things only Hashira have. And the whole my wife thing makes a lot of sense considering how girl crazy he is. That aside, let's begin where all great stories do, at the beginning. Early on, Zenitsu takes on a debt in order to give money to a woman he was smitten with. Unfortunately for him, the woman ended up running away with someone else, leaving Zenitsu with a massive debt. It is pretty sad that Zenitsu tried to buy someone's love like this, but thankfully, his debt was paid off by Jigoro Kuajima. Jigoro being a former Hashira who decided to take Zenitsu in and train him in the way of swordsmanship. They grew to develop a bond between student and master, however as their relationship more so resembled that of a grandfather and a grandson. And perhaps this is why Zenitsu affectionately refers to Jigoro as Gramps. However, Zenitsu wasn't alone in his training. Alongside him was a rather intense looking boy named Kaigaku. These students of Jigoro's couldn't be more different. For example, Kaigaku chastised Zenitsu for referring to Jigoro as Gramps, as it was something far too familiar for a former Hashira to be referred to as. Not only that, but Kaigaku seemed to genuinely resent Zenitsu, seeing the young swordsman as nothing more than a crybaby. And this was best seen when Zenitsu scaled a tree, refusing to come down because he was afraid Jigoro was working him to death. Unfortunately, while up there, Zenitsu was struck by lightning and gained his iconic yellow hair. And at that, Kaigaku and Zenitsu were set up to be one another's literary foils, and that is something that pays off heavily with their iconic final fight. However, despite their mutual feelings of negativity towards one another, Zenitsu still respected Kaigaku. But now that we've talked about his backstory, let's get on to his first appearance. At the time, Zenitsu was among some of our other would-be demon slayers before final selection. Miraculously, he survived the week atop Mount Fujikasane. Now, as a reminder, final selection required swordsmen to survive on a demon-infested mountainside, so it is rather remarkable that Zenitsu accomplished this. However, at the time, his anxiety was not quelled at all as he nervously proclaimed that he would die one day. Regardless, he did in fact receive his Kasugai Crow, which also happened to be a sparrow. Now, this is pretty silly. His sparrow Ukogi doesn't speak, but did actually manage to pass the Kasugai Crow test regardless. Crows are largely known to be some of the smartest animals around, and so this was one witty sparrow. But yeah, sometime after this, Zenitsu was in the middle of a road, begging a woman for her hand in marriage, bemoaning to her that he could die at any time. Tanjiro saw this and managed to break up this dramatic affair. However, this did not stop Zenitsu from now focusing his rage on Tanjiro. Through tears, Zenitsu asked Tanjiro to protect him until he does get married, as he is very weak. Zenitsu also mentions he hoped to die during final selection, which goes against his outwardly cowardly nature. Now, in general, Zenitsu does fear death terribly, but at a time like this, also welcomed it due to his overwhelming fear of failure. That being said, the two end up traveling together to their next mission, stopping at a mansion in the woods. Two children outside the mansion tell the young slayers that a monster took their brother into the house. Coupled with this, Tanjiro smells something unfamiliar as Zenitsu hears a Suzumi drum. This being the very first time we learn of his unique sense of hearing, considering it is a noise that neither the children nor Tanjiro are able to hear. At first, Zenitsu refuses to enter the house, but forces himself to enter after Tanjiro. Once inside, the interior shifts. This separates Zenitsu and Tanjiro. They aren't entirely alone, however, as the children entered after them, leaving Tanjiro with Teruko and Zenitsu with Shoichi. From there, a rather afraid Zenitsu and Shoichi manage to navigate the mansion until a demon corners the pair in a room. Being pushed to his limit, Zenitsu passes out. The demon advanced upon them, but suddenly a now unconscious Zenitsu quickly dispatched of it, finally providing us a glimpse of Zenitsu's true power. While asleep, Zenitsu was able to use thunder breathing, and he used it well enough to behead a demon pretty quickly. That being said, Zenitsu actually did regain consciousness afterwards, having no memory of beheading the demon, so he assumed it to be Shoichi. And considering stress seems to activate this unconscious fight or flight for Zenitsu, it's entirely plausible that he has no memory of surviving final selection. That being said, Zenitsu and Shoichi are later thrown outside of the mansion. 
Outside with them is Inosuke, who tries to attack Tanjiro's box. Zenitsu protects it from Inosuke, albeit receiving a beating in the process. And despite at this point being mostly presented to be a coward, it is admirable why exactly Zenitsu is guarding the box. He knows that there is a demon inside, but he also knows the box is important to Tanjiro. We also learn that Zenitsu can detect emotions based on hearing, remarking that Tanjiro sounds so full of kindness. Thankfully, Tanjiro arrived and was able to defuse the situation. Afterwards, a crow was able to lead them to a Wisteria Crest home for some much needed rest. While there, Zenitsu asked Tanjiro why he's traveling with a demon, and before he can answer, Nezuko comes out of her box. And Zenitsu is terrified at first. I mean, there is, after all, a demon inside. However, the demon to appear before him was a girl so beautiful that Zenitsu flew into a rage. He's not angry because Nezuko is pretty, but because he believes Tanjiro was traveling with her in pure bliss. And somehow, Zenitsu was able to scream about this all night. Now, once properly rested and healed, the trio then headed off to Natagumo Mountain, which is perhaps where we first see some development for Zenitsu. Yet again, Zenitsu is left behind due to his cowardly nature. The only thing that motivates him to join Tanjiro and Inosuke is the fact that Tanjiro took Nezuko's box with him. As even early on, Zenitsu adamantly wanted to protect Nezuko despite her demon status. This shows that Zenitsu may be a coward, but he is willing to put himself in danger for others. While trying to find Tanjiro and Inosuke, Zenitsu notices a human head on a spider's body, right after meeting the demon responsible. Zenitsu is then bitten by a spider, and like some sick twist on a superhero origin story, the spider demon then explains that Zenitsu only has a few hours before he is turned into a spider. Zenitsu runs away at first and has a flashback to when he was struck by lightning, his inner monologue revealing that he knows he's a coward and wants to better himself. Regardless, the stress of the situation was enough for him to pass out. Like before, Zenitsu fights unconsciously. He repeatedly tries to use the first form of thunder breathing, but is thwarted each and every time by the spider demon. And through another flashback, we learn that Zenitsu is only able to perform the very first form of thunder breathing. However, Jigora encourages him by saying that if you can only do one thing, then do it superbly. It is through this fight that we get to see all the insecurity that Zenitsu carries. He admits he thought he would never amount to much, but Jigoro never gave up on him. He uses first form Thunder Flash Sixfold, a technique in which Zenitsu performs Thunder Flash six times, augmenting its strength. With this technique, Zenitsu is able to defeat the Spider Demon, although regrettably the poison is still affecting him enough to cause him to collapse. Although he was able to slow its spread by way of his breathing technique, just in time for Shinobu to arrive and provide medical aid. With that, Zenitsu was required to heal. His ordeal atop the mountain was very intense indeed, but Zenitsu even managed to complain about his medication. An injured Tanjiro would later join him, and Zenitsu tells him the status of everyone. Tanjiro, Inosuke, and Zenitsu settle in for some much needed healing, and after a few days, the group was visited by Shinobu, who announced that they would be starting their rehabilitation training. But to begin, Tanjiro and Inosuke would begin their training without Zenitsu. And this was because Zenitsu had shortened arms from the poison he had received. And at that, he would see the duo come back each day incredibly exhausted. They were even so tired that they could not tell him what happened during training, which only concerned him more. But once he did join them, Zenitsu was floored by the training. Instead of seeing it as grueling work, he viewed the training as a means to get closer to the girls of the Butterfly Mansion, with his eagerness about it ramping up Inosuke as well. Regardless, Zenitsu, like Inosuke, is stumped by the reflex and whole body training with Kano. But eventually, he did end up conquering the training, as well as learning total concentration breathing. During this time, he also relayed daily events to Nezuko, and some might find it cute that he promises to take her on a nightly stroll around the garden. Later on, Zenitsu tagged along with Tanjiro and Inosuke to the Mugen train. He was pretty reluctant at first, but did in fact board the train either way. Zenitsu did fall asleep like everyone else, but not before meeting Kyojiro Rengoku, the Flame Hashira a man who he does in fact respect. In his dream, Zenitsu was on a date with Nezuko in a peach orchard. And in this dream, Nezuko was also human. This was daylight that they were walking in. Now while asleep, an intruder was able to enter his subconscious. Oddly enough, the inside of Zenitsu's subconscious is dark. It was entirely pitch black, and Zenitsu was able to appear behind the stranger with shears. He angrily states that only Nezuko was allowed there. His affection for Nezuko extends beyond this though. 
Eventually, Zenitsu, while still being very much asleep, was able to say Nezuko and the others with the sixfold extension of his first form. And with Nezuko, he was able to guard the first three cars of the train. Zenitsu was present for the final moments of Kyotaro's life and noted that the Flame Hashira had used many techniques to minimize damage to the train cars. He cried for Kyodro along with Tanjiro and Enosuke, and shortly thereafter, the Kakushi were able to arrive. And yet again, this was followed up by a recovery stay at the Butterfly Mansion. He recalls that even Tanjiro is affected by Kyodro's death and resolves to cheer him up via bean paste buns. Unfortunately, Tanjiro isn't around. But it is around this time that we begin to see Zenitsu as a bit of a cowardly lion trope. He cares deeply for those around him, even putting aside his own fear for them. He proves again and again that his heart is in the right place. But for four months, Zenitsu trained alongside Tanjiro and Enosuke. He also went on solo missions and became less of a complainer. One day deciding to go to the entertainment district with Tanjiro and Enosuke. The trio traveling with Tengen Uzui, the Sound Hashira. It's clear from the beginning that Zenitsu does not like Tengen. The Sound Hashira explained that they would be looking for Tengen's three wives. This obviously caused Zenitsu to fly into a rage, claiming this to simply be a fantasy that Tengen tells himself. Their argument ending with Tengen punching Zenitsu so hard that he passes out. Sometime later, Zenitsu was disguised as a female courtesan, but unfortunately is the only one out of the trio that isn't taken in. This leading to Tengen dropping him off at House Kyogoku, free of charge. This leads to Zenitsu taking up the shamisen. And on account of his incredible hearing, he is able to play it after only just hearing it once and vows to become the top Orion in Yoshiwara, hoping to get back at Tengen. For the most part, Zenitsu plays a very comedic role, especially during this arc. However, he does stick to the mission and does attempt to search for one of Tengen's wives, Hinatsuru. However, he was unable to find much and instead resorted to using his insane hearing. He heard a woman sobbing and came across a woman in the middle of a disheveled room. He attempted to comfort her but was interrupted by the Orion of the house, Warabihime. Eerily enough, she makes the very same noises as a demon. This causes Zenitsu to become very nervous. He's unable to answer Warabahime's question, who then begins to harm the sobbing woman. Being who he is, Zenitsu is unable to watch this go on and grabs Warabahime by the arm, demanding she stops. Once again, we see how brave Zenitsu can be in spite of his innate fear. However, Warabahime knocked him so hard into the wall that he fell unconscious. Interestingly enough, as Warabihime leaves, she notes that Zenitsu is no ordinary human, that he may possibly be a demon slayer. Now after this rather courageous act, Zenitsu went missing, but eventually he was discovered to be within an obi, which is a demon blood art of a member of the 12 Kizuki, Daki, the demon who was masquerading as an Orion. Zenitsu was somehow freed and attacked the Obi with Inosuke, Makio, and Suma, and thanks to his instincts, he manages to fight while asleep. The sentient Obi, noting that Zenitsu's attacks sound like thunder, oddly enough. Tengen joins them, but quickly dashes off to Daki. Zenitsu and Inosuke later catch up to Tengen and Tanjiro. Both help Tengen while Tanjiro puts Nezuko away. Perhaps inspired by Tengen, both arrive in a rather dramatic manner. A fight ensues between the Demon Slayers and Daki with the addition of her brother Gyutaro. While fighting, Zenitsu demands that Daki apologize to the woman from earlier, saying that those girls are not your toys. But Daki, of course, mocks him. Both Zenitsu and Inosuke take on Daki but struggle. Sometime into the battle, Zenitsu informed Inosuke that in order to defeat the demonic duo, they need to make sure the demon's heads aren't connected instead of aiming to decapitate them simultaneously. However, the rooftop they were fighting on crumbled. Zenitsu was buried underneath it. Thankfully, he was able to free himself and later continued to attack Daki. His blade, though, is unable to cut through her neck. Thankfully, Inosuke is able to help him out and the two manage to decapitate the demon Daki. Meanwhile, Gyutaro is beheaded as well, thus ending their reign as upper rank 6. But finally, he is seen hugging Tanjiro, Nezuko, and Inosuke as they rejoice over surviving the battle. Zenitsu then woke up a day after the fight, going on a mission two days before Tanjiro was able to wake up. But he was back to his usual self as he was reluctant to go. After the event of the Swordsmith Village arc, Zenitsu was overjoyed by Nezuko's ability to speak and be in the sun. He goes on to ask her to marry him and remarks how much prettier she is in the sunlight. His excitement, however, was cut a bit short by Nezuko welcoming him back as Inosuke. This enraged Zenitsu enough for him to fly into a jealous rage. Eventually, Zenitsu was able to engage in some special Hashira training. This training being meant to prepare the Demon Slayer Corps members for what will be the final showdown against Kibutsuji Muzan himself. 
but unlike the aforementioned training, uh, but unlike the aforementioned training he had received at Butterfly Mansion with the girls, he absolutely hated the idea of sparring with the Hishira. However, Tanjiro was able to get a smile out of him. But yes, this training was incredibly brutal, as he did in fact attempt to escape the Wind Hashira Sinemis. After this, he trained under the Stone Hashira, Gyomei Himejima. But one day while training, Zenitsu was notified of a certain letter. This later then serving to be some major development for Zenitsu, despite the misery of it. Not long after these events, the Ubiyashiki mansion exploded, prompting all nearby demon slayers to race towards it. Along with the Hishira and his many friends, Zenitsu was thrown into Nakime's Infinity Castle. He then heard a particular noise that he found to be familiar, saying that he will never forgive him. And at long last, we see Zenitsu's development come full circle as he comes face to face with Kaigaku, the very swordsman he trained alongside. And this part of Zenitsu's story is so satisfying for this very reason. Again, it is this cowardly lion trope given new life by way of a timid swordsman finally meeting his rival. However, there is more to it as Kaigaku is now a demon. More specifically, he is upper rank 6. At first, Kaigaku mocked Zenitsu. And of course, Zenitsu ended up crying while relaying that their master, Jigoro, killed himself over the news of Kaigaku's betrayal. Presumably, this is the news Zenitsu received in the letter. He went on to mention that Jigoro died alone. But Kaigaku coldly responded that he didn't care. Their verbal fight continued as Kaigaku went on to say that Jigoro wanted him and Zenitsu to be his joint successors. To this, Zenitsu claimed them to be pathetic successors. Zenitsu has only learned the first form, while Kaigaku has learned everything but that form. Kaigaku is angered to be grouped with Zenitsu, and so he goes in to attack. However, Zenitsu has grown tremendously as a swordsman and is actually able to instead cut Kaigaku, missing the demon's attack. They continue to argue as they fight with Zenitsu realizing that Kaigaku has eaten people. He asked Kaigaku if he knows the difference between right and wrong, as Kaigaku responded in a very chilling manner. Those who accept him are right, and those who don't are evil. What certainly highlights the major difference between these two characters. Kaigaku is only out for himself, and his fear was enough for him to become a demon. Meanwhile, Zenitsu again and again puts others before himself, regardless of how scary the situation may be. Deep down, both slayers are cowards, but Zenitsu was able to overcome that. And while Zenitsu's inner thoughts reveal that he hated Kaigaku, he also always looked up to him. He always thought of Kaigaku as special, and yet, it wasn't enough. He remarks that there was a hole in Kaigaku's box of happiness, and without plugging that hole, it left Kaigaku miserable. And after lamenting on this, Zenitsu performs the technique he invented for himself. Thunder breathing, 7th form, Honoi Kazuchi no Kami, and beheads Kaigaku. The demon curses Jigoro for teaching Zenitsu this, but the demon slayer reveals that he invented this form to fight Kaigaku as his equal. Creating another form, by the way, is a feat only accomplished by another Hashira, that Hashira being Gyu Tomiyoka. And after beheading Kaigaku, an injured Zenitsu becomes faint. He is saved by Yushiro and dreams of a field of red spider lilies. A river divides him and his master, Jigoro. Zenitsu cries for not being able to save Kaigaku and for failing to become a Hashira before Jigoro passes. The flowers wrap around him until Jigoro tearfully says that he is proud of Zenitsu. Meanwhile, Yushiro bandages up the very wounded Demon Slayer. Eventually, Zenitsu was able to regain consciousness and meet up with an injured Kano and Inosuke. The three of them then going on to join the fight to stall Muzan. They attempted to surprise Muzan, but were hit by the demon lord in the process. Later on, Zenitsu was knocked into a building by Muzan, which renders him unconscious. He then miraculously recovered and saved Inosuke. His hearing allowed him to also realize Tanjiro is still alive, despite being poisoned. Yet again, he was thrown into a building, but still got up. His determination being at full blast here, as he had been wounded countless times and thrown around, yet got back up time and time again. He continued to fight alongside Inosuke and Tanjiro, even taking a hit meant for Tanjiro, until eventually Muzan was seemingly defeated. The Kakashi then began tending to Zenitsu. He told them to inform Nezuko that he loved her and that he was courageous, fighting to the very end. He refers to her as his wife, which causes the Kakashi to point that they are in fact not married. However, all is not well as Tanjiro transformed into a demon. 
Zenitsu approached Tanjiro while being supported by the Kakashi. Zenitsu is horrified and tearfully begs Tanjiro to think of Nezuko. Along with his friends, Zenitsu tried to reason with Tanjiro, but this fell on deaf ears as Tanjiro began to rampage. But amazingly enough, Kano'o appeared and was able to inject Tanjiro with an antidote. Overjoyed and relieved, Zenitsu began sobbing, once again referring to Nezuko as his wife. Three months later, Zenitsu, along with Tanjiro, Inosuke, and Nezuko, took up residence in the old Kamado residence their life being simple with flashes of the group doing household chores. Of course, with Zenitsu still trying to woo Nezuko. But finally, the narrative skips into the future. Zenitsu's descendant Yoshiteru is seen reading Zenitsu's autobiography and is overcome with emotion. His sister Toko berates him for this. The two then head to school, during which there are many parallels between Zenitsu and Yoshiteru, both being very insane when it comes to their protective jealousy, Zenitsu of Nezuko and Yoshiteru of Toko. However, Yoshiteru's heart is also in the right place as it is revealed that he saved his sister from a truck as children. While they walk, there are references to other demon slayers as well, one of them being a shop run by two characters who look suspiciously like Mitsuri Kanroji and Obunai Iguro. And remarkably enough, Yoshiteru asks Toko if she believes in reincarnation and expresses his belief that everyone who fought Muzan was reincarnated into happier lives. But eventually they do arrive at school and Yoshiteru provides us yet another easter egg. Here he talks to two other students about the artist Yushiro Yamamoto, the alias of the last remaining demon, Yushiro, saying that number 812 Tamayo with dark blue flowers was his first love as Zenitsu's descendant with his wife Nezuko does share a similar obsession with women. Demon women at that, I might add. And with that, we have the conclusion of Zenitsu's story. A wonderful character that definitely grew on me as the story went along, whose growth in particular was very rewarding to see, going from a cowardly lion to a self-assured swordsman and one of the strongest at that. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe to Plot Armor with notifications on, because when it comes to bringing you some of the best Demon Slayer content on the platform, Plot Armor has you covered. As always, I'm Slice of Otaku. Thank you all so much for watching, and have an awesome day. I love you.